Sonny Renfro, don't you get started on me, Kate said. You know I had to look just right today. They were having brunch with the Angel family. Mason, Jamie, and Shay were fifth-generation demon hunters, and although lately two of those siblings had become friends to both Sonny and Kate, Jamie Angel was a bit of a holdout. He didn't much respect Kate's kind, something to do with her being a vampire and his being a hunter and all that. In other words, Jamie was among the uninformed, the kind who naturally sought Kate's blood and life. It had taken a good deal of persuasion by his siblings for him to call off the hunt on the Rabineau family. But in the end, the fact that Kate was now engaged to Mason Angel's best buddy, Dylan Fox, had won that battle. Since then, Dylan had permanently joined Jamie's paramilitary group of demon hunters, and Jamie had respected the vampiric ceasefire. But it didn't mean Jamie liked Kate any better, and for some reason his sister Shay was determined to change that fact. Hence they'd arrived here, at the Piggly Wiggly down the street from the Angel's plantation, surveying nearly week-old wrapping paper and cards. Sunny planted her hands on both hips. All that's left are marked down Christmas leftovers. She retrieved a poinsettia-adorned bag, the kind made specifically for champagne and wine gifts. This thing's tackier than my mama's light-up lone reindeer. Kate snorted impatiently. I'm not the one who wants to impress Jamie Angel. Which is why you took an extra thirty minutes fixing your hair. This is your cockeyed plan, not mine, Kate disagreed. And Shays, don't forget this get-together was her idea, too. Kate retrieved the bag covered in neon lime elves. Let's make her laugh and snub Jamie at the same time. We can tell him this was the closest thing we could find to the Grinch. Sonny wasn't so sure. Maybe it was her southern manners, but she wanted something pretty. Give me another second, she told her friend. I'm going to look down in the wine section. Kate glanced at her watch again. Dylan's waiting for us out in the car. I don't like leaving him so long. Sonny smiled at her friend. Honey, Dylan's fine. He hunts demons and you never fret for a minute. Why should you worry if he's sitting out in the parking lot? Kate glanced away, saying nothing, but Sonny understood. Dylan had been blinded by a mortar round while serving with his unit in Iraq, and although his guide dog, Lulu, was with him nearly everywhere, and he was fully independent and part of the Shades, Kate's love for him ran deep. So every now and then she became a bit too protective, usually when Dylan wasn't around to catch her doing so. Kate released a tight breath. Okay, sure, and I'll keep looking in this aisle. Sonny strolled toward the shelves filled with wine and beer. Bingo! At the very end of the row, she saw an absolutely lovely bag with sequins and tassels. She was about to grab it when a horrific stench reached her nostrils. The hair on her nape prickled, her body tensed, and her otherworldly senses kicked into high gear. With one sideways glance, she saw the demon over near the checkout lines. His blazing red eyes were laser-locked on Kate, who stood obliviously looking at gift cards. Even if Kate had turned, she never would have seen the rapacious creature. She wasn't a hunter, didn't have the sight, and she wasn't what Sonny was, either. Kate Rabineau was, however, a magnet for creatures of darkness who craved her blood because of the supernatural strength it would give them. Demons like this one regularly stalked Kate, and Sonny, because of her unique destiny, routinely destroyed them. Day in, day out, Sonny safeguarded her dear friend, all without Kate's knowledge that Sonny wasn't human, not even close.